Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, my wife got a bigger, wider one for her, and she enjoys him more now. Come, let's explore these real life stories. Things started going wrong in July of 2020. June was fantastic, we had gone on a mini vacation with our kid and his buddy. They hung out with us, we had a fantastic time, and that was excellent. When July rolled around, we were experiencing problems, spats over trivial matters, her lack of interest in intimacy, my interest in her day, but her lack of interest in me, extended periods in the bathroom, as well as bats. This is how July goes. August becomes more tense, and she even tries to pretend as though everything is okay. She shows me lingerie and tells me it's for my birthday. When my birthday arrives, she gets me a couple of albums, but nothing else. I had a rough day at work, she reportedly had as well, and we simply ended up cooking and hanging together. I assume, because it's a work day, anything she offers, but does not seem to be present. We eventually had a couple of large disagreements in September, and after one of them, she begged for some alone time. I thought this was suspicious, and I was devastated because I feared our marriage was dissolving. I was correct. I grabbed the dogs and went to spend the night with my brother and family. I returned home in the afternoon the next day. She had mentioned she wanted to go out with her friends before I arrived, and I never prevented her from doing so. I arrived home at 12 p.m., she arrived home at 6 p.m. I saw her and told her how delighted I was to see her. She mumbled something. The month had been horrible, and that week had been particularly bad. She's not kissing me, she's unpleasant, snarky, and downright cruel. I'm requesting that she speak with me and tell me what's going on. I realize something isn't quite right, and I want us to be all right. An acquaintance, now a dear friend, notices me at work and expresses worry. I tell him how much I love my wife, we've been dating for 8.5 years and married for 1.5 years, and how I'm at a loss for what to do. He suggested couples therapy and said he'd gone through something similar. I realized that I had been prioritizing my job. I run my own company with my brother. We've been overloaded since COVID, business has been growing, but I never stopped trying to love or be personal in discussions and physically with her. She's healed. The day I go home, I take care of her. The following morning, while she's getting ready, I ask her gently and respectfully if we might chat for a few minutes before she departs. I tell her everything I learned from the book. I read the whole thing the night before and how I felt I had been inattentive, how much I loved her, and how we should go to marital therapy to try to heal what we have since we love one another and have our kid. Something I said must have sparked something in her because she burst into tears and started repeating that I would love her after I told her to simply be honest with me. She acknowledged that she had cheated on me the previous weekend when she stated she was going to see her friends. I was taken aback but I loved my wife, my marriage, and my kid, so I pretended to be a fool and told her that everything was all right, that I could forgive her, but she had to be absolutely honest about everything. Then, she remained silent, no names, no details, only that she had been chatting to AP since July and had been having an emotional affair with him until that day in September. How am I supposed to trust her? I don't think so. I tell her that she has made a mockery of our marriage and our vows. This happened on a Thursday. I attempt to talk to her that night, but she refuses and offers little information. She claims she never promised to speak about it, but she told AP she had informed me about it. It's the same thing every Friday. I'm dry heaving, haven't slept, and feel miserable, furious, and wrecked on the inside. Eventually, Saturday arrives, and my brother, knowing how much of a disaster I am, encourages me to remain at home and deal with whatever is going on. She gets up and goes to the gym while I'm a disaster. I phoned my father, who was the cheater in their marriage, but my mother and he worked it out and have been married for 38 years and asked for his advice. He tells me it wasn't a mistake, that she understood precisely what she was doing, that she has to make a decision, and that if she doesn't, it tells you all you need to know. I gather myself because I am a wreck. I tidy the home and make certain that my kid is well cared for. Then I head down to our apartment gym and tell her she has to come down and speak to me when she's finished. 
Half an hour later, she appears, and I gently inform her that she must choose between our family and marriage or AP. I'm not sure is all I get, and she begs for some time. I accept on the condition that she does not contact or see him. She accepts and goes for a two-hour run. I can track her whereabouts using an app. She returns, finally discovers that I have cleaned the place, and when I ask her what she wants, she says, I don't know. When I push, she says it's over. I say all right, and even though I'm weeping, I take a duffel bag and stuff it with clothes, and she's screaming because I'm truly going. I kiss my kid, tell him I'm going to stay with his uncles for a little while, and he's okay since he's occupied by video games. I tell her I'll be back in the morning with the rest of my belongings and leave. The following morning, I arrive there at 6 a.m., take trash bags, and go into our bedroom and begin stuffing everything that belongs to me into them. She sits up in bed, crying, and simply stares at me. When she asked what I was doing, I informed her that she had made her choice, and she began weeping. My heart is shattered, but it also longs for my wife again. I crawl into bed with her, embrace her, and kiss her for half an hour like a fool. I tell her that it doesn't have to be this way, but she needs to be honest. Silence. So, I'm enraged and shout at her that it's all for nothing. I pack my belongings and inform her that my father and brother are five minutes away at the cafe, waiting for my call to come and assist me with the heavier items. It's 11 o'clock in the morning at this point, and I'd already packed everything. She inquires as to what we intend to tell our kid. We go wake him up and make up a phony story about communication failing. She claims she doesn't want to visit my family. I don't blame her, she's embarrassed. She brings our kid shopping, and I can sense he's a bit out of sorts and bewildered. I summon my father and brother, who arrive. We gather my three televisions and all of the equipment I had purchased to make our home smart. Of course, I left my kid all of his wonderful things. I love him, and none of this is his fault. And before I leave, she texts me not to go and to wait for her and our son. I wait. The establishment seems to have been looted. Then she steps in. She advises me not to go. Also, our son threw a display over in rage and says he hopes we could still be a family. I make a bad face at her and tell her that, of course, he does, and that's what I want, but what the heck does she want? I'll say it again, I'm not sure. I claim there's no reason for me to remain. I force her to inform her parents since they would be outraged if they found out via our son. The first week of October is coming up, and I'm trying to keep our youngster on track. I show up for him, take him to school, cook him breakfast, but I also take him to his grandparents' place on certain mornings. When I have to be at work early, I take my kid to his grandparents' place. When they ask what's going on, I tell them everything. I express my desire for us to solve things, but she persists with her indecisiveness, always replying I don't know. Despite our grown love and respect for each other, her father is upset and saddened for me. She's messaging me, expressing how much she despises herself and can't believe what she has done, all while still communicating with AP. She even asks if reconciliation is possible. I remind her of the actions she must take if she truly wants me back. During that week, I picked up my kid from practice and drove him home. He wanted to show me something, and I agreed since I adore him, and we spent an hour together in his room. When I entered the living room, she was a mess. She invited me to sit with her and drew close, wrapping her arms around me. I nearly gave in but stood up, refusing to continue if she was still communicating with that man. She claimed it was over, so I sat down and we cuddled. We even kissed briefly, and I touched her, but suddenly, the phone rang with a distinct tone, and I could see the fear in her eyes. She said he had been calling her all day since she ended things. I looked her in the eyes and asked her to show me the conversation where she ended it. She began to weep and refused. Throughout the week, I continued to take my kid to school and even prepared meals for him to keep in the fridge. She wasn't washing laundry, and I had to resist doing it for her, but my son's bedding was dirty and he smelled from not bathing. I scolded her for not taking proper care of him. Her friends planned to take her to the Renaissance Fair that weekend, and she seemed surprisingly well. She asked if I could be with our kid for a few hours. 
I agreed because I wanted to spend time with him, but I knew I wasn't ready. Regardless, I consented. When I got home from work to pick him up from his friend's house, four other boys emerged and jump into my car, apparently for a sleepover. I'm furious. She was looking at him, not the other way around. I call her, she answers, and realizes I'm about to leave if she doesn't return my call. It takes her three hours to get back, and she's irritated about it. She has the audacity to argue that she shouldn't feel bad about spending her birthday with friends, to which I respond that she should, given everything that's happening, and that she took advantage of the situation, promising it would never happen again. She then questions if she's just meant to be a mother, to which I don't even respond, but think to myself that she chose this path long before I came into the picture. We continue to converse, and she even suggests we stay together and sleep in the same bed. I refuse and walk away. My son seems depressed. I keep traveling back and forth, which is exhausting both emotionally and financially, now living 45 minutes away. Her parents only know what I've told them, as she avoids them too. It's the week of October 25th, my ex's birthday, and I find myself embarrassingly doing the Choose Me dance. It's Monday, and I'm sending her heartfelt video messages, to which she's indifferent. I continue my routine of taking care of our kid, taking him to school, and starting her birthday week with a small present, planning to work my way up. I choose a photo of the three of us at a pumpkin patch from when we first met. As I'm about to leave, something triggers me to start snooping. I discover a new vibrator in a shoebox. Our toys were discarded when I left. The package postmarks are dated the day after I left, including a gift message with a name on them. Inside, I find a note from a woman but with the same surname as AP, indicating a family photo and a letter saying my ex has ruined her marriage and that she can keep AP because of the gifts he sent her. I take photos and immediately go to her parents to disclose what I've discovered. Her father echoes the same advice I've been given, hire a lawyer, get my ducks in a row, and then file for divorce. I do exactly that, and when the papers arrive a few days later, I hand them to her. For months, we sat on it, attending soccer games and sharing a few romantic evenings, though I wouldn't dare to be intimate with her, even if the opportunity arose. It all came down to one soccer game when she noticed I wasn't quite myself, and after pressing her, she admits she's dating. That week, I finalize all the paperwork. It feels like we've made some progress, albeit in a direction I never anticipated. If you love this story, and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.